Hello, everyone. Welcome back to From the Margins. My name is Violet Knight. My name's Connor Renfro. His name is Connor Renfro, and we're your co-hosts for From the Margins podcast. And here we're back with episode 22. 22? I know. I'm feeling 22. And I don't know about you, but I did get those lyrics backwards. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so sorry, Teeth Whittle. <laughs> sorry, I'm out of response. That's okay. Between the two, between the celebrity like women in pop right now, I'm a I'm a Katy Perry stan. So, Ooh. well, they buried their that's, feud. That's very controversial. The fact that Wait, they buried what? their feud. They still have they feud, their feud. No, they buried it. Oh, they did bury... Okay, got you. I did not hear the word buried. I am so sorry. No, yeah, they buried the feud because Katy Perry was a hamburger and Taylor Swift was a thing of fries and you need to calm down. I feel like there's a story there that I don't understand. I mean, I know that you need to calm down, but I did not get the fry versus hamburger. No, in the, in the music video for You Need to Calm Down, she had all of those like LGBT celebrities making cameos and then at like the bridge, Katy Perry shows up wearing a hamburger costume. And then Taylor Swift is a sleeve of French fries. And the two of them dance together and the bad blood is settled. Okay, that's adorable. But I've never thought about it until now, until you said that word. But is it actually called a sleeve of French fries? Um, It looks like a sleeve to me. It um, does look like a sleeve. I've just never thought about it. Yeah, I guess... Like, I've only ever thought about them in terms of being, like, cartons. But it's not a carton, because it doesn't have a lid, right? Or some of them might have lids. I mean, you're right. I just, God, I feel like, I feel like this is one of those, like, Mandela effect things where I I used to know the word for the fry containers, but I just completely have not remembered them. Anyway, (laughs) speaking of things that we're not entirely sure of or certain about, we need to make some we need to have a conversation and that conversation is what the hell is up connor i have not been on an episode except for the last one we did about i'm thinking of ending things in like four or five months hello hi hi we need to talk about what's been up i need to explain to people why i've been gone i need to talk about what's happening during when i was been gone and i also have some news i can't wait to hear all about it Don't sound so enthusiastic, mister. But first, a word from our sponsors. Hey, kids. Have you ever been in this situation? Mom! Mom! Look out for the light! Why are you texting? Ah! Well, not anymore. Because now, with new and improved Do Not Disturb functionality through the third-party app Learn to Drive, your mom won't be texting at the wheel. And now back to our regularly scheduled content. What the fuck was that? <laughs> I'm, I'm trying to like brand myself, you know, because I send these sound samples out to potential sponsors. I want them to know what it would sound like to like organically plug their content into an episode. Connor, if you want to know what it's like to organically plug something, then you should probably taste the rich all flavorful organic smoke taste of hickory smoked almonds. <laughs> well, I'm opposed to almonds because they I take so much water to grow. Okay, Can actually, all of that was bullshit. Like, I'm not trying to get a sponsor. Can we please keep it in, though? Because I actually really like No, yeah, almonds. we are going to keep it in. I just wanted to say, like, I'm sorry, everybody. That was like a weird spur of the moment improv set for me. I loved it. I absolutely adored it. And frankly, I wish it was a sponsorship. Hey, sponsors, we're very cheap. Like, actually cheap. Like, go get us while we're cold. <laughs> yeah, whatever the minimum you're allowed to give us as part of a contract, we'll accept it. I would even accept a hearty handshake and possibly a dollar. A free t-shirt, perhaps. A free t-shirt. Honestly, like, a really good printed mask. We'll have a conversation. That's where we're at in our life right now. Oh, yeah. I need more masks. I actually got a mask from MTV. I, like, tweeted an entire story about it. Um, Ugh, New York. Yeah. They were out in the park giving free popsicles to um, advertise the VMA awards. Oh, wait. The A in VMA stands for awards. Anyway. 
<laughs> um, they were giving out free popsicles and masks, and they actually skipped over me. So I wrote a very angry tweet about how I just devoted over nine weeks of my life to Teen Wolf, which is an MTV property, and how Viacom should be paying me. And then they instantly <laughs> turned around and came back and gave me a free popsicle and a mask. And I said, thank you, Twitter. <gasps> Oh, <laughs> there's no that. proof. There's no proof that they actually saw it. But I like to believe that, you know, I did the whole thing where I tweeted at the company and then got instant results. Connor, I just got to be honest, like a few things have impressed me more that any human being has done than how you have over the course of two months become the definitive expert on like the cultural anthropology of Teen Wolf. I am a Teen Wolf scholar now. It's literally my PhD. But really, if you wanted to, like, if I were any sort of person in power, I would, like, so give you an honorary degree in, like, media studies. <laughs> well, it's literally just, like, literary criticism. It hasn't been very much um, media criticism, right? Because I'm not really talking about how fans respond to it. Um, well, that's still fair. But, you know, I, I have all of the, like, outlines and scripts, like, saved. So maybe I can turn it into like a published book of essays through Viacom's publishing arm. If anybody out there has no idea what we're talking about, go back to our channel and look at some of our uploads um, through the summer of 2020. Connor has just been on a tear putting out new content, like deconstructing the entire story of the Teen Wolf TV series on MTV Viacom. And analyzing it from every perspective. I know you have one on Teen Wolf in the Age of Trump. I know you have, like, Teen Wolf related to Marxism. You've approached it from every angle. Almost every angle. That's fair. What have you been up to, Violet? Well, I did tease you with, like, a story whenever we got on the call. And this is not something I've been up to so much as something that actually happened today. Uh, today, as we're recording, I actually woke up and I did something and I'm very glad I did it. And I'm sorry, mom, because <laughs> I know you listen to this. So um, mentally brace yourself, which I know is one of your least favorite things to hear me say because it never comes with anything good. But Connor, I sent you a picture as we started recording. Why don't you open up that picture and tell me what's different about it than normal? Oh, gosh. Okay. There's something, like, totally different that you may not have ever seen before because it wasn't a thing before. Facebook Messenger is taking a second to load. Oh, here we go. Oh, my goodness. What? <laughs> a second nose piercing? I got a septum piercing today. Ah, girl. I wanted to get a septum piercing forever. Like, my nose ring is adorable and I love it. It's one of the favorite things I've ever done in terms of body modification. But septum piercings are so cool to me and I love them. And I've been wanting to do it forever. And I, and this is like, I'm going to sound like the biggest asshole in the world for saying this. And I'm so sorry, but it's really hard to find a septum piercing place in the middle of COVID. I imagine. <gasps> Um, there was only one place I found in Denver that does it, but I have to give them a shout out. Um, it's Bound by Design in on Colfax in downtown Denver, because even though it sounds irresponsible that they're doing any sort of nose piercing during, during COVID, I have never seen any shop of any type go through more like preventative measures to make sure that that was done safely and securely than they did. They were fantastic. I loved them. They were the sweetest people. It was easy in and out. Um, the price was right. I could not have had a better experience. We are not sponsored by them, but God, could we please be. Speaking of preventative measures, I have news of my own to share. Oh, that is not a good lead up. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm now a full-time teacher at my tutoring agency. <gasps> and Congratulations. Thank you. And the funniest part is that due to the schools being closed for the pandemic, we have a lot of wealthy parents who are interested in pod schooling, which is, you know, a group of kids come in together. They're only exposed to each other. And they, I basically act as their real teacher, giving them homework help and my own curriculum and homework and stuff. And you just reminded me of like, what would it be called? Like security theater, hygiene theater, like 
just the rigmarole of come in, drop your stuff down, wash your hands, hold your mask, sit behind the sneeze guard, raise your hand and ask permission every time you want to take a sip of water. And then when you do it, you have to lean forward into your sneeze guard and hold your breath. (laughs) Just. Wow. Yeah. First of all, I have to comment. I missed the opportunity to make a now this is pod schooling joke. So I'm going to make it now. (laughs) Oh, for you Star Wars fans out there, that is the only joke I know. So (laughs) you're welcome. Um, Other than that, I cannot imagine working in a school right now. Obviously, you and I have so many friends that are professional teachers year round. And you're becoming like very heavily indoctrinated into this world. Indoctrinated. Yeah, because let's be honest with you. People who are like career teachers they do it for the love and they do not get enough respect but they do do it for the love they do you gotta you've got to drink the kool-aid in order to do that job and i am so appreciative and i'm so proud of you yeah um no that's true like actual like public school teachers like through the state are so valuable um i'm a little bit of a class trader kind of like the kid on parasite like i'm only a private tutor for rich kids so like I'm still working I mean, hard and I'm still trying to enrich the generation of tomorrow, but I have a little bit more protection and flexibility than like actual full time teachers. Do you think that you if you ever, ever wanted to could just like if the opportunity ever presented itself, would you ever consider like going abroad and teaching English professionally if it paid right? Yeah, I would have loved to have done that. Um that would have been a great experience for me, I imagine. It, that's just not the direction my life took. I mean, that's fair. I've been also thinking about a lot the whole about the whole direction life takes thing recently. Um, and yeah, because I know we have a friend in common who did that in Korea and absolutely loved it. I've thought about doing it too, but again, I just don't think I could pull the trigger without somebody offering it. Um, if you did have that position, would you do it in Germany or would you want to go somewhere new? Ugh, I would love to go to Germany, um, but I think you get paid more and you have, um, you're more likely to be selected to go if you go to a more developing country. I think so too. Where there's like a bigger need, you know? Right. Um, but I wouldn't really want to go to Germany unless I could go to Berlin because I'm like a Berlin fanboy. I love it so much. And you're the only person I've ever talked to who's been to Germany extensively to any degree who loves Berlin over other cities in Germany. (laughs) What other cities do people love more? Honestly, I hear people just lose their mind at Munich. Oh, yeah. München was fun. Um, And other than that, I occasionally hear a Frankfurt stand, but like those are the only two that I ever hear consistently. I mean, I was in Frankfurt. Was it that great? I don't know. Maybe if you're rich, but... That's the, kind of like living in Charlotte, North Carolina. If you're rich, it's fine. If you're not, it's not that cool. I mean, you know what the motto for Berlin is, right? I mean, I've been to Berlin, and other than them having cute bear statues all over the place, I cannot remember anything. Like, Arma, aber, sexy. Poor, but sexy. I did not know that was the motto. That actually <laughs> that's that's the motto for Berlin. It's like we're very poor, but at least we're sexy. <laughs> There's never been a city that embodies you better. Yes. Uh, well, New York is also shaping out really well for me too. And that's true. You have thrived in New York. But before we go back to New York, I do have one more comment on Berlin. Okay, yeah. When I went to Berlin, um, I took a tour and the tour guide said something that I'm very glad he mentioned because it was bugging me the whole time I was there. He said that after World War II, like Germany lost so many people that Berlin was like overdeveloped where it had more room for people than it actually had people. And because of that, like there's just so many, there's such big streets with so few people to walk down them. And I remember having that feeling and recognizing that before the tour. At one point when I was in Berlin, I remember looking down a street at like 11 a.m. on a weekday and end to end, I was the only person on that street in the middle of like a cloudy like day. And I was like, this is what Silent Hill must feel like if it was like a massive map. I bet social distancing is so easy in Berlin. Probably. Actually, that reminds me, um, Berlin is in a huge economic turmoil right now. 
because so much really? of the city's revenue comes from like the clubs and like the sex <gasps> tourism and you can't have sex tourism during a pandemic. That's so true. Oh my God. That makes me wonder how South Carolina is doing. <laughs> <laughs> well, my mom told me that, uh, they're so opened that like a second spike is inevitable there. Like USC is already, um, just criminally overrun with COVID. Yeah. I am not surprised at all. Like, we're both from South Carolina. We know that's pretty much how people roll. <coughs> like, it makes me upset because I know how many people are vulnerable and don't have, like, a say in other people wearing a mask there. But people wear your masks. Don't be selfish. If you put your own life at risk, that's one thing. But you're inherently putting other people at risk, too. Yeah. Please wear a mask. I'm forced to wear a mask, so you should also be forced to wear one. I'm not forced to wear one, but by God, I'm choosing to. Because I'm doing my part as an American citizen, and I'm making a declaration. If you don't wear a mask, you're un-American. Congratulations. How does it feel to be a commie? (laughs) As a commie, I take offense to that. Fuck you. (laughs) Well, I'm actually an anarchist. Anarcho-commie. Oh, no, Connor. You're one of those. Yeah. You're one of those Tumblr radicals. Um... Did I get radicalized on Tumblr? I literally got radicalized on Facebook, of all places. People don't give Facebook the credit. It can radicalize just as well as any other social media site. Mm Mm-hmm. So, Um, Violet, where are you right now? Politically or, like, socially or... No, like, geographically. I talked about being in New York. Where are you? That's right. Good good tie back. So, here... Can I just tell it in the form of the story as to, like, how I got where I am? Yeah. Update me. I'm all right. I'm also unclear on the details. Hold on, I got a burp. Bruh. Sorry. <laughs> Sorry. Um all right, last time I recorded with you before I'm thinking of ending things was we <laughs> did the nostalgic cartoon episode, which I owe an apology and a retraction for. <gasps> I went back and watched Dave the Barbarian. <laughs> it didn't hold up as well as we remember it. <laughs> So that was almost our legacy if we had not returned after the summer. Like, I, I'm sorry for like false hyping. I kind of did the same thing with Charlie Kaufman and I'm thinking of ending things where I hyped it up so much. And then I was like, oh shit, I got to wheel that back a little bit now. Well, speaking of ending things, I don't know. The movie's getting really good reviews and it's making me question my own tastes. I mean, all tastes are valid. We had good points. We didn't talk for an hour and a half just blowing stuff out of our butt. We came up with good critiques just because everybody else likes it. I mean, I think also people are just glad to have anything new to watch during COVID. Probably. And so many people came out to me as Charlie Kaufman fans, and I had never even heard his name before this movie, so... Really? Yeah, really. He's done so many cool things, like... I've um, only watched Eternal Sunshine, and I only watched that this past year. I'm actually having trouble remembering because he's like does a lot of those really adaptations. Cool Synecdoche. Oh, he also did Being um, John Malkovich. Yeah, I remember watching Being John Malkovich for the first time, and I was like, "Whoa, I am fascinated." Hmm. Oh, but anyway, um, my summer. Um, yeah, we recorded that episode, and after that, kind of everything I'd feared happened. I had to move out of my last apartment in Denver because the lease was up. I had not found a job yet, and I did have a few jobs pending, so I moved in with a friend of mine in Thornton, Colorado, and I was like, I just gotta live long enough to find out if that last job, my, like, I had, like, a Hail Mary job I was waiting to hear back from. I was like, if I get it, I get to stay in Colorado. If I don't get it, I have to move back to South Carolina and break my heart. Um, I stayed there and they strung me along for a month, all the while I'm not paying rent to this friend, and I'm very aware of that fact. And my anxiety's mounting. And I'm like, I'm so sorry. Any day now, the moment I find out one way or the other, we'll figure it out. And they were so cool about all of it. Um, And then the first week of July, I found out that I did not get the job I was waiting for. Despite making it to like the final two or three. And I was devastated. And like 95% of all the stuff I've ever owned was in my car already, ready to go. And so... I picked up and I moved across the country to South Carolina and I was like, 
I just, it broke me. I was so, so hurt. And I wasn't really like showing it all that much, but just the anxiety of not seeing my parents in so long and having to like give up on the state and the city that's meant so much to me after all these years. I did not know how to reconcile that very well. So like the first week, couple weeks of me being back with my parents were almost nonstop arguing. I'm being a little mean. There were some very, very, like there were some very necessary arguments. I'll put it that way. Like the ones where you just kind of have to, like nobody likes having the conversations, but for the better of everybody, it just has to be out. Um, we had a couple of those, um, but after being there for about two and a half weeks, I got a message from a friend that was like, hey, did you know a former boss at a place we both worked at actually got a new job at this new place and is looking to hire people? And I was like, whoa, that's amazing. Are you serious? And like, yeah. And they sent me the link and an old supervisor I had at one of my like internships uh, is a like sort of man manager director at a political campaign for 2020. Not like a big one, like not working for either of the candidates, but working for like an independent expenditure committee, which I'm not going to go into what that means right now, for a nonprofit. And I, they were looking for field organizers, which is like, to put a field organizer in perspective, if you've ever got a text from a campaign or a random dial, it's either from a volunteer or a field organizer. The only difference is like a field organizer is like the lowest level job you can have in politics professionally where you actually get paid. Um, that's just the easiest way to remember it. But yeah, I got the job and I'm working as a field organizer for a nonprofit here in Denver. It's, before they even told me I had the job, I was already like back in my car on my way to Colorado. Like... <laughs> I was so certain and I believed and I was so excited to have faith in something again that I got in my car and I just drove and I drove like 14 hours in one day which is I think a record for me it's got to be close uh yeah I drove from Blacksburg South Carolina all the way to Topeka Kansas in one day and then finished the stretch the next day and moved back in with the same friend who, once I did get the job, I can now pay rent to. And it feels so nice. It's a temporary job because obviously the election's not forever. And I will be looking for work again in like two months. But for now, it's literal anything. And it buys me some time. It gives me more experience. And it gives me that like, I don't know. I feel like I'm ready to live life again. I feel like I believe in myself more. The early half of this year, outside of this, um, Outside of this podcast, and frankly, you, Connor, the early half of this year was just complete awful, and every bit of it was awful, and I don't want to think about it. Then so, let's not think about yeah. it. That's what's been up with me, and that's why I've been a complete ghost on this channel, is because I've had to deal with so much else emotionally and just personally that I didn't have the capacity to contribute like I should. And now I'm kind of back, and unless I go through another unemployment period in, like, November... Please hire me. I have a great political, legal, and nonprofit experience. Um, unless I go through another period like that in November, I'm really back and I want to contribute and be part of the creative output again. I have missed this channel. I love this channel. And I love our fans. And I love everybody that watches our show and is like, oh, I saw it. You did such a good job. And I'm like, thanks for, you know, the compliments. This is so fun. Yay! Yay! Wow, I didn't get that full story any of the other times I talked to you, so thank you for sharing. Have I not told you everything? Um, I don't know. The impression I got was like, you already had the job offer, so you were going to leave on one day, but then you left the day before <laughs> that day, and then, I don't know. It was a, it was a soft offer. Like It was a soft it offer. Was it wasn't not... official. Yeah, like, there's no way they could have confirmed. It was like, I believed I had it, so it wasn't like a confirmed thing. I was I was coming here more on faith than I was on certainty. Right. You just weren't going to, like, tell me that you were pulling that kind of gambit. <laughs> I don't want people to think I'm reckless, because right. I'm not. I mean, I don't always follow my heart. I Too often I follow my brain. You waited until it paid off before you told us you were reckless so that you wouldn't be embarrassed. Yeah. It's kind of like not telling people you started a diet just in case it fails. <laughs> yeah. Me every time I quit smoking. Uh, me every time I try to count calories. Ugh. 
like I don't tell people I'm on a diet until I've got like two months of like consistent doing it. Mm-hmm. And then I'm like, okay, this has been long enough. Right. Like I didn't tell anybody I converted to Judaism until like after the first year. We need to talk about this. <laughs> <I've> <laughs> just kidding. <laughs> no, just kidding. I just I'll, took like, an introductory me? course in Kabbalah or Kabbalah. <laughs> Oh God, I miss you so much. <laughs> and then my oh, yeah, Connor, we have not even addressed a big elephant in the room. Wow, rude. Sorry. Just kidding. What's the <laughs> name? That elephant. Like, Who's that elephant? <laughs> that elephant's name is Zach, and he was on the last episode of From the Margins. You may remember. Oh yeah, that guy who wouldn't shut up about dementia. He was being very genuine and personable with us, Connor. He was telling a very sad story about his grandparents. I know I'm an asshole. I love I mean, you, Zach. I'm so sorry. Other. I love you too, Zach. Don't let Connor say things that's like that's mean to you. And then the moment the microphone's off, I'm like, fuck you, Zach. <laughs> I have this problem I where I like to like viciously rib people because I like I know it's not sincere. But then the second anybody tries to pull the same thing on me, I instantly burst into tears and get super defensive. So I really am the epitome of can't take the heat but stays in the kitchen. I swear, our friend group is like the most mean friend group ever. Like, I have been, re- I like, I love Zach to death and I would take a bullet for him any day of the week, including Sundays. Um, but at the same time, I'm still so mean to him. Yeah. Hmm. Interesting. But, so, the reason I bring him up is because, I mean, let's just tell it like it is. We want to integrate him more on the channel. He is, he is the third leg of our trio. We love him to death. He has a lot to contribute from a lot of perspectives that we don't share. Because he's a hard sciences person. He's a STEM kid. And a Republican. (laughs) You are giving such a bad idea. He's not a Republican. Not to my knowledge. He's a Democrat, which is even worse. He's a democratic libertarian. (laughs) Democratic libertarian. Yeah, he's just a walking contradiction. He hates the free market. He had a little, like, mini rant against it on Facebook earlier today. He believes exclusively in captive markets, and then he'd like to capture people and sell them. (laughs) So, (laughs) yeah. To commodify captives. Anyway. So, yeah, we're going to bring a cishet white man onto our channel because we just are like diversity well we wanted optimum diversity and we didn't have a cis straight white male and how could we have a cw original series without one i mean personally no offense Zach. i totally would have had like a cis hat like woman of color i like i for to round us out but it's about the free time you know yeah whatever i mean i guess this hat I guess this white hat people are oppressed in this condition. Whatever. Well, on Ren Fair, I am open to interviewing anybody who has something interesting to share. So that's fair. we could and do I the same on From of... the Margins. That's true. If we oh, even keep oh, this name. Hmm? We actually talked, the our very second episode, you and I both talked about like interviewing somebody and they actually said yes and we still haven't interviewed them. Oh, shit. Who was it? Oh, yeah. It was, about? yeah, it was the one with the initials rdt yes that's exactly right and i still want to contact them and be like hey would you be willing to pop in for a guest spot one day they're such a good orator they're like an amazing orator i love them so much they would give so much one of my biggest regrets in college was not being better friends with them and i want to like cite to this when i have that interview with them (laughs) my biggest regret after college is not staying in touch ain't that the truth but it's just but yeah, the so world is so f- we big. really have a lot of things changing with the channel we're bringing on zach a lot more we want him to be an official third member of this channel he has a lot to contribute and he is again the third leg of us in a real social friend group it only makes sense for him to be like here on the scene too and i think you guys will like him and we have a lot of really cool ideas of things we want to do with connor starting a new job full-time we're going to be a little bit pressed, so we might have to do videos once every two weeks instead of once every one week. But regardless, I've got the fire again. I've got a lot of things that I want to do too, like Connor's been doing Rent Fair. I'm considering doing my own little independent stuff sometimes. So if you want content, we'll give you content. It's just we're going to have to do it at our own pace. We're busy. If you want us to give you content every day of the week, we got to have every day of the week content money. And we don't. That's why we're out here shucking almonds and like selling 
apps for not texting. <laughs> I think I'm onto something. A third party app something. that hacks your phone and doesn't let you drive, even though every phone already comes with a do not disturb setting. I mean, it's kind of like that one Bojack Horseman joke, like what time is it right now dot com. It's like just because it's already <laughs> in existence doesn't mean it can't be like, made cool. And they have like original streaming. <laughs> Exactly. Bojack Horseman was like the perfect late capitalism horror story. It really was. And it hit so... It hit just right. Oh, actually, I went through a minor depressive spell last weekend and I rewatched the second half of season six and didn't cry. Really? That's very interesting. I don't know what happened to me. I mean, I was already depressed. Maybe I just couldn't access the feelings. I guess so. Oh, well. I will... I hope you know that whenever we were uploading the episode for I'm just thinking of I'm thinking of ending things, I wanted so badly to like put in the comments like what is this a crossover episode Violet's back? Oh, <laughs> uh, I I honestly for some reason I think about that show more after watching it than I ever did during it. It's probably just the best show to ever exist. Yeah, besides I Teen Wolf, was- of course. Besides Teen Wolf, of course, which I've still not ever seen an episode of. If we ever live together, I'm going to make you watch at least the first season with me. Please. I would very much love to. Well, I think this has actually been a really good check-in. We talked about some really fun things. You got a little bit of glimpse behind the scenes and saw, you know, how the hot dogs are made. <laughs> I mean, I've seen disgusting. how the sausages are made. Learned. I am the sausage. This message brought to you by <laughs> Woke on like Hulu. One. Where's our Hulu original programming? Where's our Netflix original programming? I'm not discriminatory. Give us Amazon Prime original programming. We want to show. I mean, okay, I'm just going to say it because I'm real like that. And part of me, the package deal is that I'm brash. I think Hulu... Connor being raw. He is raw dogging this emotionally. I think Hulu has the worst user experience but the best original programming. I mean, Netflix has better things just because of the law of, like, volume. Like, they put out so much that, like, there's going to be some brilliant ideas in there, but Hulu has more consistent hits per capita than Netflix does. So I would rather be on Hulu, even though I don't think their platform is as good. Their user interface has a lot to be desired. I'm not going to lie to myself and pretend like it's not, but at the same time... When I watch streaming shows, I typically go, uh, I'll just be honest, I'm a weeb. I go for anime. Hulu traditionally picks better anime options than Netflix, but when I want to watch something that's not anime, I typically go to Netflix, to be honest. So. Yeah, but you only just recently got your Hulu subscription. I mean, but I had still been watching on a friend's account forever. Oh, true. Like, it's still something I'd been watching forever. Like, I, I've had enough time to see Hulu's original programming grow. Rami... Oh, yeah, difficult people. Oh, difficult people. We could do a whole episode just on that. We are difficult people. We are difficult people. You are absolutely Billy Eichner. Uh, God damn it. I am the Billy character. You are the Billy character. I'm you Arthur. Don't do even fucking lie. I'm Arthur you're and you're Julie. I'm a big bi Arthur. <laughs> I'm a big bisexual Arthur. I'm asexual now, actually. Well, I don't know. I, I won't take the asexual label, but I will say that I am celibate. Forgive my skepticism, but like 10 minutes ago, you were Jewish. (laughs) Just like Billy. (laughs) Oh my God, it's all coming full circle. And Julie. You can't live in New York City without converting to Judaism. Just like you can't Um, cross the river into New Jersey without becoming Catholic. And Italian. (laughs) I'm not going to comment on any of the stereotypes. No, that was a real episode they did. It was so good. God, I'm going to rewatch Difficult People. That is a real episode. I completely forgot about Julie's trip to New Jersey. Author. I swear to God, she did. Did I tell you she liked one of my tweets? Yes. Violet gets a lot of engagement from checkmark people. Yeah, because one, I'm cute as fuck. Two, I mean, if you just put it out there, people either respond or they don't. There's no harm, no foul. Like, I told Julie Klausner that I was the transgender daughter she never had and she liked it. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> I was so proud. Who else did I do, do something like that with? I've done that to several people. There was that one artist I've been following since I was in high school, and she posted a picture of her dog wearing a wig, and you tweeted, <gasps> <Yeah>. Edward. 
<laughs> Edward. <laughs> For you non weebs, that's a full metal alchemist reference. What? Oh, I thought you were just I being silly and saying Edward. JK, JK, that's not even a good joke. Take that out. <laughs> I was about to say, I was like, Connor, I'm about to like. I was about to react if you actually did not know what that was referencing and still reacted so strongly. No. I was so in shock. Full Metal Alchemist was my shit in high school. Well, actually, middle school. I need to go back and watch it. Um, I've never watched Brotherhood because I'm a fake fan. But everybody says Brotherhood's the masked one. Yeah, everybody says Brotherhood is better. But, I mean, I'm out of that phase and Full Metal Alchemist did it for me when I was in that phase, so I don't need to go in and revise my understanding of it. I mean, unfortunately for me, now that I've got a nose piercing, I'm just a big gay degenerate, and I'm going to be unemployed forever now. So, ooh, ooh. You know, I have tons of time to watch anime. I have no free time. I'm surprised I could even sit down to record this episode. Kind of same here. I work really weird hours now. Also, for anybody who might be an employer, but actually, like, having a septum piercing, you could just turn it up and nobody will ever see it. <laughs> I specifically made sure of that. Like, you can hide a septum piercing so easily. I love the idea of, like, people scouting for employees by looking at underground YouTube podcasts. I mean, to be honest, though, it's like, that. I, I wouldn't be surprised. Like, I got... I found out about that one arts festival I was a part of, like, through the most obscure-ass means, and it worked out. All right. Yeah. You look in the right places, you can find magic. 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 All right, let's kill this episode. I have completely forgotten what that's from. That's from Danganronpa V3. That's, uh, <gasps> that's what's what her name? From. I forgot. It's Himiko. Himiko Ueno. Yumeno. Connor, when are we doing Himiko a Danganronpa Yumeno? episode? Next. Probably next. not next, but... You know. Pro- oh man. Okay. Eventually, we'll do a Danganronpa for, episode. That shit's evergreen. For everyone out there, including Sarah Zed, get ready. A Danganronpa episode is coming, and everybody, please at Sarah Zed. She'll know. Love you. Love you. Bye. Bye. Bye.